Hey guys, so if you have been checking the front page of distrowatch.com lately, you may have noticed that there is a release candidate available for Linux Mint 17. One of my all-time favorite distributions, or at least, well, the 17th in a line of one of my favorite distributions. And today I'm going to be giving you a first impressions review. So without further ado, um, let's get started. So what I've done here is that I've uh, booted up into the uh, live CD and uh, I'm just about to start uh, Linux Mint from the boot menu there. So Linux Mint, like I say, is the first distribution I used that I really truly felt comfortable with. Um, before Linux Mint I'd used, uh, started off with SUSE, then went with Fedora, then Ubuntu, and then Linux Mint. And this was back in the day when the multimedia codecs weren't really that readily available. And Linux Mint was kind of revolutionary in its uh, that it actually included the ability to play DVDs out of the box, that it could play MP3s out of the box, and all this kind of stuff. And it really made life a lot easier for me as a Linux newbie. Even though I tried three distributions before it, it was uh, it was still the first one that I really felt comfortable and and you know, uh, yeah, comfortable with. Okay, so. Um, I'm going to have to quickly switch over my display here just to um just because uh now it's entered a sort of a more graphical state so I've just had to change my recording software there. So um Linux Mint comes bundled with quite a lot of software but it comes in a 1.2 gigabyte download. Um so it comes with Firefox web browser as default, hex chat which is um, your IRC client. If you don't know what that is, it's essentially a way for you to talk with the rest of the Linux community if you need any kind of help or support or um, anything like that. Pigeon Instant Messenger you can use to chat over uh, AOL, Google Talk, Jabber, Yahoo, MSN. It gives you uh, LibreOffice as your default office package. Now nowadays most people who use, or a lot of people, will sort of go more towards the cloud applications, like Microsoft have moved a lot of their office software to the cloud. Um, the Google Docs is actually pretty good, and I, I kind of have a feeling that as a as a digital society, we are moving more towards the cloud. But LibreOffice is there. Should you uh, should you require it? it? Gives you your standard. Uh, gives you a band sheet to organise your music collection. Um, and it gives you all the preferences in a very easy and straightforward menu. Unlike Ubuntu, which just has icons up the wall, I can never really get to grips with the Unity interface. Anyway. Let's try the install process because to me that is a benchmark of how user-friendly distribution is. Linux Mint is designed to be user-friendly. So, um, so for those of you that want a bit of context as to what Linux Mint is as a distribution, um, it's based on Ubuntu. Uh, and Ubuntu is probably the most well-known and at least media-savvy Linux distribution out there. But, um, but it isn't the highest ranking one on distrowatch.com. That actually does go to our friend Linux Mint here um, as the most popular one. And there are a few um, nuances and per perhaps reasons based on that, um, not necessarily just because of flat out popularity. Um, so yeah, um, like I say, this is definitely based around user friendliness. And what it does is it essentially takes Ubuntu and it grounds it. It says, hang on a minute, maybe you don't want these fancy interfaces. Maybe you don't want the icons up the side of the screen or however they, they want to change up their, their user interface. Maybe they want something that's a bit more familiar to a Windows user or, well, familiar to anyone. And um, that's what Cinnamon is based on. So I'm trialing out the Cinnamon version here, but it comes in two main flavors. Um, I log in automatically just because this is a virtual machine. Um, it comes in Cinnamon and it comes in Mate. These are two different um, desktop environments. And th to be honest, I, I gotta say the big one. It's a bit of a fault, actually, in my opinion, that Linux Mint tries to peddle it with both versions of their operating system with Mate and with Cinnamon right off the bat. Um, with the press release, it included both the Mate version and the Cinnamon version, two different desktop interfaces that are actually quite similar and both reasonably user-friendly to use. So, you know, 
I don't even, you know, I don't know why they're insistent on having both. I mean, it would be nice if they picked one and just went with it. Maybe Cinnamon, because Cinnamon is a shell for Gnome 3. So there's a lot of, uh, all, you know, there's a big community already behind a large chunk of the software that they're using for their desktop interface. Um, but yeah, this is definitely the easiest distribution to move over. And I have sometimes in the past criticized Linux Mint for not being corporate friendly enough or proprietary friendly enough uh, and what I mean by that is is that it's very community oriented distribution and there are some amazing positives to that uh, they listen to the community they take on feedback from the community and they communicate with the community really 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 well a star for that um, but it is very settled in the Linux world when it can perhaps gain a little more potential if it appealed more to Windows users by being a little more friendly to proprietary software by being a bit more friendly to uh, having options to buy applications for it. Now, it's obviously compatible with Steam, which is, to me, it's, a, it's an important factor, but Steam's compatible with a lot of distributions nowadays. So you do you can buy games for it, and you can, I'm sure in time, buy applications through Steam for Linux as well. You can certainly do that for Windows. Um, but Ubuntu have tried to bring in an app store, and they haven't done a particularly good job at it, but it would be nice if there were some way that you could actually sell software on Linux to, to actually, for, that Linux could perhaps be a platform for independent software developers that are actually looking to make a living rather than just to uh, give away their software for free. And yeah, no, you know, I know that with open source, there are ways that you can monetize it, ways that you can earn a living off of it uh, without actually having to make it proprietary or anything. But um, to me, Linux is about choice, different types of software, different ways of using software. Uh, different choices in, in what software that you're going to use at all. And it would be nice if there were some choices for proprietary as well as some cho you know, choices for open source. Uh, because some software works better as proprietary, some software works better as open source. For example, games, for example, are naturally proprietary pieces of software because games have a life cycle. You might get bored of a game after two months and therefore might want to go back to the well and buy another one. Whereas with open source games, uh, with open source um, software, uh, if you have a problem and you will develop a piece of software to solve said problem, um, then once you've developed that source environment, because it, 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 there's no like necessary incentive to actually have to keep reinventing that program just to make more money to sell more units. Problem is solved. Uh, you know, job done. Whereas with a lot of software you might find in the proprietary world with Windows is that they might develop a word processor, but um, but they might have to keep reinventing that word processor to keep selling more versions of it. So some software does work naturally as open source very, very well. And um, some software does work quite well, in my opinion, as proprietary. And it would be nice to mix and match, have a bit of both. And Linux is, yeah, as a whole, group of distributions is moving towards that and I think that's going to be what eventually pushes it as a more widely used distribution than Windows um, and I, I believe it will do in time it might take a while but Windows is sliding and it's moving to the cloud as well I mean we could very well see that, that Windows might very well be a cloud based operating system in five years time but uh, you know, then, then we're getting into the realms of speculation here so going back to Linux Mint um, yeah, it's the grounded version of Ubuntu. A lot of people say that it's Ubuntu done right, and I, I kind of agree with that 99 times out of 100. Um, it's, it's, it's straightforward. It's got very simple, straightforward user interfaces. Uh, it's similar to Windows, but without actually having to take on the flaws of Windows. Um, the software that comes bundled with it is actually pretty good. Now, I don't usually put too much stock in the software that's bundled with the distribution because it's just so easy to install software through Linux that um, that it's, it's, it's a secondary issue. Um, in fact, I, I would be more happy actually if a lot of distributions came as a, say, a 200 megabyte install download, and then you actually chose your software as part of the install process like some of the Debian installers do. Um, because nowadays a lot of people, just as an option, not necessarily even as their flagship download, um, but as far as um, but uh, as far as Linux Mint goes, and the software that it does choose in its 1.2 gigabyte download, it makes some good choices it's with software. Can't deny that the best choices. Actually, I think the software that's bundled with Linux Mint is probably the best bundle that you will get. So, um, so not too bad there. They they 
could possibly squeeze that down into a, a 700 megabyte download to fit onto a CD rather than a DVD. But um, I think nowadays CDs are, uh, you know, the the, the difference is, uh, is kind of negligible, maybe. Um, I mean, I've got a pretty slow internet connection and I don't have a problem downloading 12, uh, 1.2 gigabytes. So, so I should be okay, but... Uh, but there you go. I mean, Linux and Linux Mint, to me, at least want to appear accessible, and they are. So, uh, so good on them for that. Um, but yeah, I mean, Ubuntu have this habit of just making dramatic changes to their user interface or how their software works. And every, like, I quite like reading the Ubuntu press releases because there's usually some some interesting surprises in there. But um, but with Linux, uh, Linux Mint, it's it's almost just it's been the same distribution as it has for a good number of years now um, and that's a good thing because like I say with open source you don't need to keep reinventing the wheel and adding shiny new gadgets that no one's going to use to keep selling new units um, you can have like an evolving piece of software that evolves either slowly over time or even not at all if you've got the if you've solved the problem you don't need to keep resolving it and and that's um, that's a pretty good philosophy to have, and Linux Mint do take the philosophy of if it ain't broke, don't fix it, and they um, they do. Do we really need these language packs? We skip them. I don't know. Yes, there we go. So this is the release candidate. So it's not the final release. Um, it's more stable than beta, less stable than a final release. And I don't usually, even though I have done on this channel before, even I don't like to um, test run beta distributions because it's really not a final um a uh, final a uh, final product and i will give them very much the benefit of the doubt if it's a beta um and because um unlike early access on steam we're not paying for 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 distribution here so it's more than it's not a lot to ask of a community to do a bit of beta testing if they're getting a free operating system out of the mix but um but with the but with the release candidate of linux mint in every time I've I've used the release candidate for Linux Mint, it's been as stable as the final distribution, um, because it is based on the latest release of Ubuntu, which is stable. So it's 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 about as stable as a as a non-release or pre-release version of software is going to get. So um, so I certainly certainly um, think that this is a good reflection of what we have in store. But like I say. Um, I was running Linux Mint 13, which is the long-term support release, which I believe all this is also a long-term support release. And it's almost indistinguishable from it. The theme's practically indistinguishable from it. Um, the software bundle's practically indistinguishable from it. And, um, uh, you know, they made a lot of right decisions very early on. So more power to them on that one. But it's really just updating the versions of the software. There might be some more features on some of the actual software, updating the repositories, you know, the software in the libraries, um, updating drivers uh, and the default drivers that come bundled with it. Um, but really, it's the same old Linux Mint by the looks of it, just on the surface here, that we all know and love. And um, you got to admit, Linux Mint knows its strengths. It knows how to play to them. And... Um, um, and you got to give them credit for that. Got to give them credit for that. Like I say, though, we are still in the install process at the moment, but the same Linux Mint have been releasing the same distribution for the past five, four, five years, really. Um, the first distributions that Linux Mint were released, they were still finding their feet, but... Um, but uh, but but they they're well and truly established as a distribution now, and they were um, in was it PC Linux magazine? One of the magazines. Uh, it was christened the distribution of 2013, and rightfully so, which was Linux Mint 16, if I'm not mistaken. So, like I said, yeah, Linux Mint generally pretty fine distribution. Um, it comes with a decent amount of eye candy. It looks quite nice. Possibly not the nicest looking distribution out there, and you can certainly add a few tweaks to make it look quite nice. But again, most people don't want to overdo it on the bells and whistles. Uh, you know, a nice bit of shine 
you know, it, it it's almost required in Linux distributions because Linux distributions still have something to prove to the wider digital world, and that's that they're user friendly. They can be used as a mainstream distribution. You know, that they ha have that degree of of popular appeal, and um, and a little bit of eye candy is kind of required for that. So anyway, let's restart. Let's see whether or not we're going to have any problems booting up. Um, and, uh, and 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 what the system's like once it's up and running. So um, you're probably not going to be able to see too much here. Switch over to my uh, my monitor um, input. So I don't really know what to expect at this point. I obviously um, tested the live CD before um, before showing you guys, but I didn't actually test the final install process because I do tend to like to do these things blind. So. so here we go. So I'm not actually expecting any surprises here, um, because uh, Linux Mint doesn't really do do surprises, do, does it? Um, so it comes bundled with the MP3, the ability to play MP3s, the ability to play DVDs out of the box. It comes with, I do believe, a version of J Java. Um, the only thing I don't think it comes bundled with by default, and like I said, this could be different with this release. Um, is that I don't think it comes bundled with the ability to encode in high def formats, but that's that's just a package that you might need to install. It's not a it's not a particularly laborious task. So um, also this isn't really a true reflection of the boot up time either, because like I say, this is a virtual machine um, which is not an actual uh, physical computer, which will actually run this a lot more smoother and a lot faster. So, uh, what have we got here? We've got the welcome screen, which actually looks very nice, very polished. Gives you a user guide, important information. Okay, that was a bit funky. Yeah. Okay, so what that was, that was just my, um, the, my recording software just adjusting to the graphics of this. Um, Okay, so this is quinoa. Is that how you pronounce it? Seventeen. So it gives you. Yeah, this is the pr press release that it uh, that it comes up. Known issues: login screen freezes for German-speaking users. Nvidia Optimus cards do not work yet. So they want uh, they want some testers on that. Um, but yeah, no, fundamentally speaking, the issues by and large with Linux Mint are few and far between. Gives you some uh, tutorials, sponsors, uh, donations. Tutorials by format. They got some uh, some essentials there. The ideas pool. So yeah, Linux Mint uh, as a development community, very good at listening to their users. And um, you've got to give them credit to that because if you look at um, Ubuntu, they're pretty damn terrible. They do, they do their own thing. And um, there sometimes is good reason for that. Sometimes that, um, you know, Ubuntu run by Canical is, you know, it has a profit motive and it needs to, uh, it needs to put food on the table for its employees at the end of the day. Um, I believe Linux Mint, last time I was reading, have two full-time employees, but I could very well be wrong on that one. They have a very small team, but then they are building on top of the Ubuntu base. So there we go. Um, and like I say, they are very good at listening to their user base and um, that's something we could really see more of. Um, okay, so the accessories, the graphics, come with the GIMP image editor. Um, 
comes with Firefox, as you saw, that was uh, open previously. So yeah, it's got a good software bundle, the best software bundle out of any distribution, really. Um, and again, I think that's just really simply as a result of listening to their user base. A lot of distributions put the software that they th either that they think people want without actually listening to them, or the software that they pers that the developers personally want. Um, or sometimes they just put just just software in without thinking about it sort of too much, just as a filler up to the CD possibly. So anyway, yeah, you can drag the windows to maximize, not maximize, make them fit half the screen, I think. Water of the screen, that's pretty nifty. You can divide up the screen quite easily, which is nice. Okay, so anyway, I don't really want to spend too much time looking at the GIMP, as you got, you guys are probably well aware um, of its quality of an as a uh, image manipulation tool, Photoshop. Personally, I like it. A lot of people do have problems with the user interface, but um, to each his own there. Uh, okay, so it's very quite well known for having a very good update manager. Um, it has been criticized by the developers of Ubuntu, um, but then again, there's a some degree of incentive in, in, in criticizing that. So uh, Ubuntu, uh, Linux Mint takes stability very, very seriously in their distributions. And, um, and, uh, and, and this is part of what, part of the reason why, is that um, each of these upgrades has been given a ranking one to five. Um, one being the most stable and five being the least stable. Um, so I think it even gives you, yeah, it gives you the information here, does it? View, history of updates, preferences, I think it probably, yeah, here we go. So when it comes to upgrading all the various software packages in Linux Mint, um, it's actually uh, really good at classifying them. So for example, um, all these in, uh, are optional updates that you can uh, that you can install. So the description here is uh, if it's a level one description, it's a certified package tested through Romeo or directly maintained by Linux Mint. And then number two, recommended packages tested and approved by Linux Mint upstream means that it comes from behind Linux Mint. So in this case, it's either Ubuntu or what Ubuntu is based on, which is Debian. Um, and that's and it's been tested as well, which means well it's, it's been tested. So three is safe packages not tested but believed to be safe. So these are ones that have been pretty uh, pr are pretty well established on the Ubuntu repositories. And then four is unsafe packages could potentially affect the stability of the system. Dangerous packages known to affect the stability of the systems depending on certain specs of hardware. Now four and five don't necessarily mean that it's like malicious. Um, software or that it's a dangerous well it says it's dangerous here but usually what this means is that is that it's a the type of upgrade which if done badly or if done poorly or if done in the wrong circumstances could quite sorely corrupt your system which would cause a lot of ache for you to have to try and fix it again um, when you might not necessarily have to when it's an update that's not really that important um, so uh, so it, it only advises you to do um, these three off the bat. Um, but, uh, but yeah, one to three is, is generally considered what people update as. Um, and then this tells you, this tells you what type. Now this is new to me, I think, but then again, my last version of Linux Mint was 13. So this is a package update, which updates a piece of software that you might use so it might give you a new uh, feature it might correct a bug or it might but something to do with your software so for example like the firefox or gimp that we were looking at a little bit earlier and then the red exclamation mark is a security update which means that um, it just improves or fortifies the security of your system by the looks of it um, security updates of course pretty damn important but uh, it's nice that they actually classify it and sort of let you know um, Although sometimes you could argue that they're kind of um, there's some overlap here with, for example, with um, with Firefox, it might give you a new feature. It might improve the security. But anyway, that's the update. Which again, Linux Mint tool that 
uh, has been pretty well received um, because now that Ubuntu actually include a lot of the proprietary codecs like MP3s and even I think there might be the ability to play back DVDs included in um, even in its initial install if I'm not mistaken there's certainly a lot of proprietary codecs in Ubuntu's initial install and um, and that's made it a lot easier for people who are new to Linux who don't really know what codecs even are but um, but Linux Mint has actually found a way to survive, even though um, Ubuntu have brought in the feature that Linux Mint was originally conceived to correct. So that's pretty cool. Um, and again, a lot of and Linux Mint has made a name for itself not being as crazy as Ubuntu. So um, what other Mint tools are there? There's a few, isn't there? There's the, the uh, software upload manager. Um, Software Manager, that's the one I was thinking of. So the Software Manager here is um, how you can install new pieces of software. Um, again, it was originally um, conceived because the Ubuntu version, the Ubuntu software installer just wasn't really that great at the time. It's certainly, the Ubuntu one has improved a lot in recent, uh, in recent years. But that hasn't stopped the Linux Mint team from actually developing their own. Those black flashes, I'm going to assume, are actually from the virtual machine and the graphics, you know, being generated rather than the actual distribution itself. Um, so I wouldn't take that um, uh, as a as a particular warning or or as something that would happen to you there. So anyway, you can have a look at games. I'll just pick games out of the way because I usually like to see um, how. Linux distributions have advanced in the games department. Not really. <laughs> we've still got Wine, we've got Wesnoth, we've got Super Tux Cart, Warzone. So these are all, for, for all intents and purposes, pretty the same old, same old mediocre games that we are kind of used to. Um, can we actually pick up Steam? Yeah. So you can install the Steam launcher here, which for some reason only has four stars out of five, which is a bit of a crime because it's the best thing to ever happen in Linux in the last couple of years. Um, but yeah, you can install the, the Steam Launcher and you can get Steam up up and running. And uh, it's, again, it's as easy as just sort of double clicking and um, and installing away, really. But it does take a while. So, uh, so that's a thing there. So there are a handful of other uh, Linux Mint tools which you can actually kind of pick up, um, but they're um, but they're all pretty good. They're all improvements on uh, on what Ubuntu has to offer. So, uh, just as a bit of a quick summary, then I got to say I'm about as impressed with Linux Mint as I always am when a new distribution comes out, which is to say pretty darn impressed. Um, you're never really wowed by a Linux Mint uh, distribution because they never make these radical and 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 uh, massive changes that Ubuntu tend to. Um, but that's definitely a good thing from the Linux Mint developers. They know what people want. They know what people uh, sort of are looking for in an operating system. They know very well the software bundles that um, that should really go with their operating system. Um, and a, a lot of that is down to just listening to people. And I think as a distribution, they are very, very, very good at listening to their, their user base. And um, and they keep you very informed with blogs. And uh, the, the Linux Mint website is actually very, very, very well maintained. Um, and it shows. And it really does show. Um, so if you're looking for an operating system where you kind of want to feel a little bit of a connection to the people who are actually making it, you want them to actually sort of uh, listen to you and if you you know you want um, something which is a little more conservative a little more straightforward a little more uh, has a little more of a stable attitude that takes stability very 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 seriously actually um, again to their credit um, then this is definitely a distribution you might want to look into it's also a no aggro distribution it's install and go it's as simple as that it installs the codex it installs a good software bundle you can just put it on your system and you can kind of just just pick it up and use it. I mean, I am personally a big fan of LXDE, and I like LXDE as a desktop environment because it's pretty much identical to Windows 95, which is, to me, the day when we actually worked out the best user interface. Um, 
And I don't mind the uh, the funky panels that they've put in here. Um, it works well. The search feature works well. The uh, quick links on the side, they work well. Um, and when I do install Linux Mint, I do keep the Cinnamon um, desktop environment actually, rather than switching to LXDE because it's it's similar enough and good enough looking that I um, that I'm happy to have it on my system. So yeah, the guys at Linux Mint really do know what they're doing when it comes to to an operating system. I can't really sing their praises highly enough. Only one 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 tiny criticism, and it is a tiny criticism that I have with Linux Mint is that they release both Mate and Cinnamon at the same time and they don't really make it clear the distinction between them, which can be pretty confusing to new users. I mean, new users aren't going to know what a desktop environment is. They're not going to know what the difference between Cinnamon and Mate is. They're not going to care that Mate is a, a fork of GNOME 2.0, whereas Cinnamon is a shell for GNOME 3. Um, yeah, so... Um, so I think that, that if they had a single flagship distribution like they used to have, that would be a lot more accommodating to people who were switching from Windows. Um, I think that it would be also, again, would be more accommodating to, to Windows users if the uh, drive partitioning was a little more straightforward. It's not too bad if you want to wipe the entire hard disk and then put Linux on, on there, but it would be interesting if there was a straightforward user friendly way to put your home partition on a separate partition, something which Windows users might not understand is as important as it actually is, because there is no default to put your home folder on a separate partition, and you have to do it through the actual partition manager, which is which is user friendly, but possibly not to your average Windows XP to uh, Linux Mint convert. Um, uh, but then again, that's a dis that's a criticism I can carry across to just about any distribution out there. But it would be nice to see the ability to divide your hard disk up for uh, with, with home as a separate partition, just because uh, just as a, a sort of a not even necessarily as a, well yeah maybe as a default um, as a default option. But uh, but again, that's a, uh, well I say it's a small thing. The thing is when Linux Mint. Uh, upgrade or the upgrade the standard upgrade procedure for Linux Mint is a reinstall is to wipe everything clean and to reinstall so if you do not have your home folder on a separate partition then a reinstall is a much bigger deal and because installing it on a whole single partition is the default install option their default upgrade process is a big deal and to do that every six months is more time consuming than people want and again I don't know if there's like enough information for a complete Linux newbie to actually make all these informed decisions of correctly and and what information is more important than other information um, but then again you know uh, I think I'm really sort of kind of looking for gripes or at least these are kind of minor gripes um, but it w would be nice if um, because I, I would like to personally see an install process that was more like Ubuntu's where you just um, where, where you know you'd get a pop-up saying there's a new version of Linux Mint available. Click here to upgrade, uh, and then it gives you a bit of a briefing. It gives you known issues, and then you can choose to upgrade if you feel that it's safe enough. And that would be a great option to upgrade. Um, obviously, Linux Mint considers that to be unstable, and they do take stability really, really seriously. And that is a good reason for not offering that particular upgrade feature. But if you're going to insist, or at least heavily advise people to do a fresh install uh, every time they want to update Linux Mint, then, um, then having the home partition on a separate, uh, the home directory on a separate partition as a default install option might be, um, might be a good idea, might be a good step to, to move into. Um, but that being said, uh, to install a long-term release as well uh, so that you don't have to update every six months is a pretty good option for Linux Mint as well because Linux Mint changes very slowly over time. It's a distribution that evolves. It's not like Ubuntu where one day the icons are going to be vertical, the next they're going to be horizontal, the next they're going to be, you know, just all over the place. Um, Linux Mint is a very sensible and grounded distribution, again, to its credit. And um, and you can easily get away with installing a long-term uh, support release without um, without missing out on too much, which is great. Um, and again, um, maybe, you know, I, I, I don't know how um, how prominently they put their long-term support releases versus their short-term releases. But again, that might be 
um, more accommodating to, to new people because, again, people who are used to Windows, not used to upgrading very often, and upgrading every six months is going to be you know, a hell of a shock to them. But like I say, all in all, fantastic distribution as always. No surprises, thankfully. Um, and again, it's like I say, it's a distribution that evolves slowly over time, and it's one that we can rely on. And it is a good distribution to rely on because they take stability uh, just really, really seriously because you know, fixing bugs and fixing errors, it's just, it's just, life's too short for that kind of thing, and, and the developers of Linux Mint know that, and um, and they certainly set Ubuntu straight on more than a few issues. So, um, anyway, that's just a few thoughts on Linux Mint. Uh, I know that I've covered sort of Linux Mint in a wider capacity, rather than just Linux Mint 17 here. Um, if you guys want me to check out the Mate version of the distribution, please let me know down in the comments section below, and I'll be more than happy to. Um, don't forget to follow me on Twitter as well, at Christopher Ware. You can see that little purple thing up there. Um, I, whenever I do a live stream, I tend to tell people on Twitter. Sometimes people on YouTube know, but um, sometimes they don't. Uh, so anyway, that's about it for me today. Thank you very, very, very much for watching. And um, I've been Chris Ware, and you've been awesome. Take care now.